Hello everybody, welcome to another video and this one we'll be taking a look at how to use joysticks and behind me this is a magazine from 1994 and this has different joystick controllers in there it's got a quick shot 2 kind of a joystick which is I think leaf sprung but it's kind of a flight navigator kind of a controller where you grip it like that and you force it left and right and we've also got the Competition Pro type of controller which is digital but it might have leaf sprung buttons on there and leaf sprung means that it's not a clicker it's a soft button that touches another pad and it's literally like that it's very silent but leaf sprung buttons that do it silently are better for arcade games that require fast very fast reactions so the normal part of the joystick will be micro switched and the rest of it won't and you can also see a pad controller there with a d-pad on it and four buttons that gives away that it's a cd32 kind of controller this is 1994 that we're looking at this type of controller didn't really appear on the amiga until well i'd say at least 1990 one ninety two, they started to appear before that in the 80s you, you didn't use any of those on the Amiga you used kind of this type of controller a joystick rather than a joypad or you used one of these flight stick things which uh, well some, some of, I had a quick shot 2 turbo uh, and it's kind of alright if you played intercept and things like that but I played that on the keyboard so I'm not too worried about them um, so what I use is this. It's stuck to my magazine at the moment because it's got suction cups on the bottom of it. And this is called a zip stick. You can see it written on the bottom. Zip stick without without a C on there. Stick. So like lipstick or whatever it is, it's zip stick. So this one is the most common type. This is the yellow version with the yellow band around it and the yellow buttons. And this is usually my icon on whatever I'm using, whatever forum or whatever it is, I'll usually, I'll well often anyway, use this kind of an icon. My controller, this is the controller I've used, well maybe not this specific one, or maybe it is, but this is the one I've used since at least I got my, uh, well let's see now, at least, at least 1990. So... I think I went to one of these exhibitions and I picked one up in a box and I thought oh that feels nice that feels great I'm going to use that from now on so this type of controller is very similar to the competition pro type you can see it's got a knob on the end for want of a better word and it's got this kind of rounded cornered um, package that it comes in and it's made out of plastic and things like that so if you remember the old Atari joysticks they had less of a thing going on around them and it was a, a very tall thin thing that went about this far so all they've done from the Atari joystick is put a knob on it to stop your hand from moving off of it that's what the knob's there for and I've seen people online playing it like this saying why is it not working my controller is not working well that's not how to use the controller is it so in this video you know, the people online using this incorrectly, I'm going to show you how to use a controller, or well, basically a joystick controller. So, there are tons of them out there available, but this is my preferred one. You can hear, it's got a click to it, and when you press the fire buttons, it's got a click to it. Those are the micro switches, and you push them, a little relay will go down. And then when you let go it will come back up again so you can hear it when it goes down and when it comes back up again so that can sometimes be important in games so you can hear out like that if you get a leaf sprung version that's just a flat pad you're not going to hear anything but those are for like beat em ups and shoot em ups so this one is mostly for well accurate gaming platformers i'd say if you need accuracy because it's obviously got all the, de all the different directions of travel on there and if you're using a d-pad or something like that then it's all on your thumb and d-pads were invented by nintendo because they couldn't afford to release a joystick 
So they realised, they were trying to rip off a Tory and Commodore, they realised that they just had a, a, a thumb pad there to do everything left, right, up and down. You know, the game was actually playable, but that was the cheapest option. And now to this day, people recommend, oh yeah, you've got to use a D-pad for the, for the uh, jumping. Uh, oh, but I need a fire button to jump. That's the only problem with the D-pad. It gets people used to having to use a fire button to jump. And I've never actually got into that. I've never bought into that. People swear, oh yeah, you definitely need a fire button. Yeah, but that's because you're using one of these stupid D-pads. The D-pads were never invented for platform games, they were just invented for the cheapest Nintendo thing that you could play Zelda with it and go up and down and things like that. They were never invented for fast diagonal movements, otherwise you break your thumb on it. So, for those fast diagonal movements you really want something that clicks so you can hear it, and something that goes there, 100%. You don't need to try to do it, you don't need to angle your way to it, you don't need to move your thumb anywhere and you break your wrist, all you need to do is push it in that direction and it'll go there. So for, for platform games that require jumping, that's essential. And anything else that requires diagonal movement, it's a lot easier and you can just do it with one finger. So this isn't the only type of zipstick available, there is a much rarer pink version that I've got here and this one is mostly the same except that it's pink and this I've converted into a kind of a female version so with the male version you can hear the buttons and the clicking and with the female version you can hear the buttons and the clicking so it's much more sensitive that one than this one. So I haven't used this, this is the original joystick that I've just put a different inner in there and changed the buttons around but when I bought this I think the original inside of the mechanism went into this one and the old mechanism out of this one went into this one so you can hear it's completely and utterly different, it's really sensitive you don't have to put any pressure on it whatsoever and you know it's instant it's a bit like um, uh, what do they call them speed kings where speed king hasn't got much travel between what they call the shaft and the micro switches so it's instant with uh, speed king so that's a, bit, that's, that's a lot tighter and on the end of these obviously they've got the usual whatever it is connector on the bottom I think they used to call it a D9 connector or RS232 or whatever but those plug into Sega, the Nintendo, whatever it is Commodore 64 and I bought an adapter for it this is one that I got off a guy in Canada I had to get it shipped in so this is version 3 I don't know if you can actually see that whatever that is on the thing, but that's version 3.1 hopefully of this dongle and this dongle is compatible with every machine so this thing can be plugged into a Sega, a Commodore, a VIC-20, whatever with this connector on it and it'll automatically convert it it's not just a pass-through, it's a converter so you might have heard stories about plugging these things into a Commodore 64 and it blowing things up Well. That's why you need a converter. So this is 3.1 and that just plugs into USB. And on this one we've got version 3.0. I think that has a label on it. And that plugs also into USB. So I've just got a, an adapter on there. So how to use one of these things? Well, first of all, how do you hold one? Well, you hold one like that with your finger like that, with the fingers underneath like that, holding it, one finger maybe behind or on top of the suction cup if you've got one and with crossways like that so that you can finger can, can do that. Most people hold it like that naturally so the fingers are already on the fire button unless they're left handed and then they hold it like that. That's why you've got two fire buttons and then you can you know, do that. What happens if you're left handed and you're using one of these controllers and you you try and do it like this and the left hand, oh I can't use this fire button, I want to use the 
you know, the fire buttons need to be on this side. So you need to turn the control upside down and use it with your other hand and use the buttons upside down. Well, with this one, guess what? They've just put two buttons on, left and right. How easy is that? So that's all you do. So how do you hold it? That's how you hold it. <coughs> Very firmly around the bottom of it so it's not going to move anywhere. And if you need to clamp it down to anything, you can always stick it. It will stick to wood or paper or you know whatever you've got glass if you've got a glass surface then that's perfect for this kind of thing you just wet the bottom of it or lick it stick it on there and then that's not going to move anywhere is it uh, but it's very it's quite light actually i think this one's even lighter still with it being the female version i've trimmed thin down but there wasn't actually a female version by the way that's just what i call it so they're quite light, they're light enough, they're about as heavy as a PS2 controller, I think, not as heavy as an Xbox 360. And you can get all different types of these kinds of joysticks. Like I say, some of them are leaf sprung on the buttons and on the delivery, some of them are micro switches, so I go for the micro switch one. And this one's also got an auto fire, so that's auto on and that's auto off. And this one's also got auto fire as well, although neither of these are actually working on this particular. On these models, both of them are, well, if you waggle them about, they kind of do, but there's something wrong with them, so I have them all switched off. So that's how you can hold it like that, and then you can just press the fire button. And then how do you hold it with your other hand? Well, again, presuming that you're right handed, you grab hold of that like that, and you usually maybe even have it on the top like that because on some controllers there's a top fire button you know if you look at this quick shot too behind here there's a, a, a trigger button on here but there's also a, a top button on here that you can press it so on some controllers they expect you to play it like that with a firm grip with the fingers underneath the knob on the end so nothing moves and then you can just use the thumb to control and that's usually the classic version of how people usually hold these controllers in the diagonal or whatever. But that's not how I do it, so let's show you how I do it. First of all, it's the difference between a car driver and a Formula 1 driver. Car driver grips the wheel, yanks it around. Formula 1 driver grips it lightly with the fingertips and just moves it into whatever direction that they need to go into. Um, so that's what I do, that's my default, as usual, the default, you know, grip, whatever, but if I'm pushing it forward, all I do is that, alright, with the hand behind it like that, and if I'm pushing it back, all I do is pull it back again, so if I try and get rid of these fingers out of the shot, let's just try that again, push it forward, pull it back, so you're just doing that, basically. And then to pull it left and right, you push it in like that and pull it back like that. So the thumb does one thing and then the first finger both pushes it in and pushes it that way and pulls it that way as well. So you're doing it all with the finger and pull it back pushing forward. So that basically looks like that. I'm moving it on all different directions. And if you want to do the diagonals, it's well, you can either do it pushing it that way which sometimes works bob on but it's pretty difficult to do it like that or you can do it with the grip the finger around it and pushing it into the diagonals pushing it in so you're not losing anything you're pushing it into those diagonals obviously that does it like that and then that does it like that so if you're playing i don't know one of these pyramid games where you have to use the dead out these diagonals then you can use it like that up, down, and then up, and down like that. So you can see I'm hardly using all of the thing, and that's usually because that's faster than gripping it like that. You usually lose a certain amount of, you know, trying to do that and yanking it in that direction, you lose time. Uh, 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 uh. You're losing time with that travel. But if you're just doing that, it's instant. Yeah, instant, instant. So you're not losing any time. If you if you're playing track and field, you know, that's a different thing. You can pull it left and right like that. 
but that's a different thing that I'll move on to. If you're playing Turrican and it's a platform game, basically you're holding it in this direction to walk left to right, and then you jump in, all you need to do is push it upwards. So that's jump. So that's standing, I'm running now, and then I'm jumping, jumping again, jumping again, ducking, jumping, jumping, ducking, jumping. So I don't need a button. Why do I need to waste my time leaning over and pressing a button? You know, that takes ages. That takes ages. But if I can just do that and that, that's instant, isn't it? Jump, 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 jump. Or jump, 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 jump. You know, even if, you, even if you've got your finger on it and you're going... Yeah, it's not as quick as... It's just not. It's just not. So that's why, if you're playing a platform game, that's why most of them on the Amiga go left, right, up, down, you push up to jump, and then you push up to jump diagonal like that, so you can just do it. You can run and jump, run and jump. You don't have to time it with a fire button. All these pixel perfect jumps is the problem, because you have to wait and you have to get that absolutely perfect. If you're already running in that direction, you're doing that, it's more instant and more or less guaranteed to get it on the pixel. Was that you know so that's why all these people that complain complain every more games on the Amiga that use fire buttons to jump well that's why that's why if you're using one of them controllers that's why it's not you it's the controller and if you use a different controller then maybe you'd change your mind about that because these are professional game player controllers made rugged tough you know and this is the Ike boot of the Amiga controller. There are some flip-flops, there are some deck shoes, but this is the hiking boot of controllers. It's solid, tough, you know, it's one of these builder's joysticks. Indestructible, virtually. So anyway, if you're doing track and field, then that's a different thing. Then you turn it like that, grip it like that, one, two, and then what you can do is move it down. So I usually well if if I'm doing a if I'm doing a, a running thing then it's like this and that's left and right so obviously that takes a lot shorter time than actually doing the left and right you can just you can just do that or that to jump obviously if you've got a, a joystick with a longer shaft on there that's going to take longer to do that. So if you have got a Speed King with a nice short shaft on there, ee, that's a lot easier for those track and field type games. You can see I'm doing it so fast that the camera isn't even be able to pick it up. That's so much easier than trying to do that. I mean, for God's sake, they didn't imagine track and field when they were doing this on a D-pad controller. You need a controller with, a, a, you know, instant reactions, and a D-pad just isn't people who complain about that so that's that's different again and if, if I am using a Turrican game sometimes I put it on my knee I can't really do it on this screenshot but put it on my knee with with one hand and use a different hand to control it so let's see if I can remember how how I usually do it I think if I'm playing a shooting up game I put it on my knee and and, and try to all it that on that that knee, but that means I can press the fire button a lot quicker with that finger. Whereas if I'm doing that finger, it, it's fast, but it's not as fast as that because you can. You, you, for some reason, most people can hit the left fire button quicker than they can hit the right one. And the reason why they put the right fire button there is to slow players down. If you notice on arcades, the stick is usually always to the left, and the well on the right, no, on the left, sorry. And then the button is always on the right, so you can do this very quickly. With controllers, they put it there to slow you down. So anyway, that's why, you know, everything's there to slow you down. Otherwise, you'd be too good at the games, wouldn't you? So anyway, so something like that, I, I put it on the left knee for, for, for Turrican and just jump like that in the, in the diagonals and when I'm pressing fire I can, I can press fire a lot quicker than doing it with the other hand so for, 
certain games it helps to be ambidextrous but for the most part that you know is how you use it and I've got a photograph with the fingertips like that I've actually got a photograph of me with my very first Amiga in it and you can see right at the bottom I've, I'm playing the game Captain Planet and you can see at the bottom I'm just pushing it forward with the tips of my fingers so that's basically how you use a controller and hopefully that's even more sense so hopefully that's given you some idea I mean you can pull it and do it like that you know using the flight stick manoeuvre what you don't do is that oh my game isn't working oh I can't do it why is it not working it's because you need to get hold of it by the ball get hold of it and press it like that pull it but then learn to do it very gently and lightly just like that gentle 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 like that all right and there's nothing wrong with this type of controller and you can play platform games and press the fire button and all this stuff a lot quicker so anyway that's my joystick of choice the zip stick and I used to have tons and tons of different joysticks but these are the best ones so I've kept them and uh, that's basically it so thanks a lot for watching this video I hope this isn't preaching too much to the converted but obviously it's nostalgia so what can you do uh, there's no there's, there's absolutely nothing on the internet telling anybody how to use a joystick there's plenty of videos on games plenty of videos on hardware even software what we got behind here scoop 4d uh, ray dance and all that stuff there's videos about stuff that you wouldn't even believe but there's not a single controller how to actually use the controller video so anyway not to my knowledge anyway so that's what I do and uh, thanks a lot